California blackworms. I've had them in the fish cave now for about two months and I've already contributed them to making a few of my fish breed and bring out a color and a bunch of others. They're actually pretty easy to keep and there's a bunch of different ways out there. If you do a Google search, you can find a numerous amount of ways out there and how to keep them. Some people keep them in the refrigerator. Some people keep them in a smaller, like a shoebox size container. I keep them out in the fish cave right now. It's the winter time. There's no heater in the tank whatsoever. In the summertime, when the fish cave gets up into the 80s, I'm gonna go ahead and bring them inside. This is the method that's worked for me. Watch this video and tweak it for your needs. The great news is these black worms live in a bunch of different conditions. Like I said, a lot of people keep them in the fridge. You're not gonna need a heater. I keep them just here in the, in the garage, AKA the fish cave. So let's talk about my specific setup. It's a five gallon tank. It's about halfway filled because the black worms don't like too much water. You know, six to 10 inches is more than enough. As you see here, I'm using a five gallon tank. I have a sponge filter. I have some gravel and some live plants and nothing special. You don't need to use a five gallon tank. Anything will work. Actually, I'm gonna set up a second culture here in this 2.5 gallon tank in this video just to kind of show you guys how it's done and how simple it is. I've added live plants to the tank, in this case some hornwort for two main reasons. Number one, to help keep the nitrates down. Believe it or not, these worms are just like any other fish or shrimp. They're not like a huge fish, but they do create some waste, so the plants help with that. And number two, with the live plants, you may see some infusoria in the tank come with that. And believe it or not, the black worms will actually feed on those infusoria. Now the five gallon tank I'm using to culture these black worms is obviously not the smallest thing you could use to culture live food. People who culture, you know, brine shrimp or, you know, little grindle worms, they can, vinegar eels can use a smaller container. However, even though this is slightly bigger, it's not huge, like I said, a five gallon tank. And also there's not a lot of maintenance. Since we are running a sponge filter, we don't have to kind of worry about a crash every few days. I want to briefly talk about the pros and cons of the black worm compared to other foods, live foods or flake foods, pellets, etc. Um, obviously a live food, you know, a pro versus a flake food or a pellet is, it's a lot more nutritious, you know, it's, it's a live living thing, it's more akin to what they would get in the, uh, the wild, and therefore usually we see a lot of, you know, breeding behavior come out, you know, colors will really come out with a live food as opposed to, you know, any, you know, flake or processed food. The black worm is nice that it will live in your aquarium temperatures, in, your, in an aquarium. Um, you know, your grindle worms, your vinegar eels, your brine shrimp, you know, need other vessels, salt water, et cetera, et cetera. These, uh, these worms, literally, if you can keep a freshwater aquarium, then you know the exact parameters, you know what you need for California black worms. You can even feed them different things. Some people feed them that old school brown paper towel, you know, the one at your old school uh, bathroom or a public restroom. You can use that as a food source. I actually went in a different direction and I use spirulina pellets. I kind of like to gut load them almost like you would a cricket or something for your reptiles. And that means feeding them some decent food. That way when they get fed to your fish, they're getting some decent food as well. And what you see in there now are these veggie algae wafers from Aquatic Arts. I feed these things to my shrimp and plecos and also to the, um, the black worms. I also use this by Aquatic Arts. It's the, uh, the fish and invert. These are spirulina pellets. I'll put a link in the description to my Amazon affiliate link. If you're interested in buying some, it does help support the channel. Um, I use these. You can use an assortment of things. Like I said, it's just important to use something of decent quality since you will be feeding the worms themselves to your fish. Just like any other culture or aquarium you set up, make sure you don't overfeed get an idea for how much the culture is consuming and only feed what they can eat within a day or so. Something I should mention is these guys reproduce fairly slow, um, which is good in terms of you're not gonna have them you know, reproduce quickly overnight and crash your system. Actually, they don't even reproduce sexually in the aquarium. The way these guys reproduce in the aquarium is kinda, they get broken up and then they kinda regenerate. So they get split in half and then those two halves will grow new worms. So essentially, you know, it's a good idea every once in a while to stir them up and I'm gonna show you guys how you know, I kind of help propagate them a little quicker. The size of the worm should be mentioned. It's a little larger than some of the other you know, cultured foods, like especially like a baby brine shrimp. So so uh, California black worm isn't the best choice of food for you know newly hatched rainbow fish fry, for instance. Although my rainbow fish fry at a few weeks, a month or two old, are eating them fine. But these black worms are really great at conditioning fish to have them breed. Uh, my African butterfly cichlids bred because of them. Um, they're a great food for if you have any pea puffers or any kind of puffer. Um, the black worms are a great food for them as well. And even fully grown, you know, medium-sized fish like rainbow fish will eat them up and love them like crazy. 
corridors especially too. So to start this culture, we're gonna use this leftover tank. Like I said, you don't necessarily need a five gallon tank. I think it's a really good size because um, when you have it halfway filled, that two and a half gallons will provide you know, a really good stable environment. This is actually a two and a half gallon tank. And once again, we're gonna keep it about halfway filled. I just have some room temperature water in there. Just hit a little bit of the chlorinator in there. And next we're gonna add our substrate. And like I said, I like to use a gravel. I'm gonna use a pea gravel. And what I've done here is I've kind of even strained it out because we don't mind the medium small rocks, but the really tiny ones, based on how we're going to go ahead and um, you know collect or harvest our worms, we're gonna wanna get the really, really tiny ones out of there as much as possible. And, um, and then what you can do is coat the bottom. You just want a nice thin layer on the bottom. You don't want a thick layer at all. Just almost one thin coat. So let's see if we have enough here. I cleaned out this gravel, but apparently not enough. Make sure you clean out your gravel all the way, guys. And this should be enough. And for a filter for this tank, it's kind of small even for a little sponge filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a little air pump here and we just got an air stone. And essentially we're gonna make our own little sponge filter. Took a little pre-filter sponge here and we just kind of stuck a, a scissor in there, made a little opening and we're gonna drop our air stone right in there. All right, so now that we got the air stone dropped into there, we'll drop our new little filter into the tank and it's gonna act very similarly to any other sponge filter. Now that we got the tank set up with the filter, we're gonna go ahead and add these black worms. And in order to do that, I'm gonna show you how I culture them. So the way that I grab these out of our main tank right here will be the way that you can harvest them eventually to feed your fish. What we're gonna need for that is a little small collection container and a turkey baster. So the reason why we're gonna get as many as the small pebbles out of here as possible is when we're harvesting, some of the small pebbles can get stuck in the little nozzle and that makes it just a little more frustrating um, if you have any comments down below, maybe how to make it better, let me know. But this way, even with the annoyance sometimes of getting some pebbles, it, it works the best. So just squeeze on the bulb, stick it underneath. And what you want to do is you want to get the, um, the nozzle onto the glass. And you kind of just drag it. You let go of the bulb and drag it along the, grass, or the, uh, the glass. And that's where the worms hang out. And you'll just notice the worms are going to get sucked in as you make different paths through the glass. And as we can see here, as we squirt the water out, we have plenty of black worms. And I usually do that a few times um, to feed. In this case, we'll do it a few times to harvest and you know, to seed our new tank over here. So same thing, start out with the bulb pressed in and just drag it along the bottom as you slowly release the bulb and just deposit them. Since we're starting a whole new culture here, I'm gonna go three or four times. Like I was talking about, sometimes you suck up some smaller rocks so they kind of clog up the, the turkey baster. But then essentially every time that happens, that's one less small rock in your actual tank. Obviously you don't put those little tiny rocks back into the tank to keep them out. And eventually you'll have only the rock size in here that can't get sucked up into your, uh, into your siphon. So even just getting in here, harvesting the worms actually kind of stirs them up and breaks them up a little bit. But I'm going to show you guys another way, um, you know, I, I come in here and stir them up even when I'm not harvesting just to kind of break them up. I'm going to show you guys another way that I've uh, used to stir them up. So in order to break these worms up quicker and help them reproduce faster, I made a little project here. I took a little intake filter and I hot rotted it, kind of modified it with an old gravel intake. So essentially, as you'll see, we're going to lay this on the gravel. Some of the worms will get sucked up through here and kind of spit out through there across the side of the tank. And that helps them just kind of break up a bit. Um, big shout out to Kevin over at Aquascape Supply for my inspiration. He was telling me at the big farms where they grow them, they actually have these machines that kind of do this similar thing where they kind of turn them up and they gently kind of spit them out and just, you know, make them, break them up into tinier pieces. So big shout out to him. Let's get this plugged in and I'll show you guys how it kind of works. Now it is far from a perfect science, but essentially water and the black worms would get sucked in here and kind of spit out through this tube to this side of the tank. So theoretically, I place some food near this end and the black worms kind of make their way over here, get sucked in and then spit out, hopefully getting chopped up into a piece or two or two or three pieces and delivered on this end and then they can regenerate and regrow. Not as effective, I'm sure, as some of the commercial operations and devices, but I think it just adds a little extra element to my tank. But 
I think the majority of the splitting of the worms happens when I stir up the gravel, you know, every few days or so. So here we are at the new tank. It's been a few days since we set it up and it's kind of settled in here. Our little sponge filter is working well back there. Um, it's kind of hard to see the worms because they're not all congregated in one spot right now. But there's a few up front here and um, a few more as we come down here but they seem to be doing well. Like I said, these aren't the fastest growing worms. That's why as much as I want to feed them with the tanks I have, I'm setting up double cultures. I'm actually not even running a light on this culture. I just popped it on there to show you guys, you know, how it's doing, but that's how simple and um, easy it is to, to run an additional culture or even start your first one. Go ahead and check out the video in the pinned comment below if you guys enjoyed the fish feeding footage in this video. If you've already checked that video out, there's another one right there. I appreciate you guys watching. As always, stay positive and stay passionate.